Thank you to our finance chair, Julissa Ferreras, uh, budget director, Fulahan, and commissioner, Lynn, council member, Ben Kalos. You can tweet me at Ben Kalos. I'm uh, chair of the governmental operations committee. I have oversight over DCAS. We've now had uh, two joint hearings with the Civil Service and Labor Commission with uh, Chair Danique Miller, specifically on provisionals. I am, I am troubled by your response to uh, Chair Ferraris' questions regarding uh, provisionals. We can work with DCAS to get them to have as many uh, civil service exams as possible, but the only way we will actually get uh, any movement is if the Office of Labor Relations is looking at the entire city instead of DCAS being stuck going agency by agency to make sure that in our overall labor relations plan we are working to move the provisionals out and replace them with people who have actually been tested into the position, are not patronage hires, and are tested. So I would like to follow up on Julissa's question. I'd also like to ask a couple of additional questions and then give you time to respond. Um, last year, we were able to identify $4 billion in potential contract overruns. We asked about that last year. It is now this year. Uh, so have those overruns been capped, and how will they be prevented in the future? Uh, additionally, as the city begins to purchase more and more software to operate government more efficiently, but, um, is the city considering using free, libre, and open source software and collaborative purchasing with other jurisdictions to save on costs? And speaking of costs, uh, Cost-benefit analysis is uh, a tool that will allow government to make better infrastructure investments, but despite laws on point, it appears that the city has not been conducting these analyses. Will you be making this a standard practice moving forward? And uh, last but certainly not least, in fiscal year 2001, going into the Bloomberg administration, we had $3.8 billion in debt service. Uh, as of this year, we're looking at $6.2 billion in debt service, and by fiscal year 19, we're looking at $8.1 billion in debt service. Generally, when we're doing debt service, we like to pay off debt instead of having the amount of money we're going to be paying for our debt going further up and up. And when we're talking about our debt, uh, we are looking at a constitutional debt limit of $81.4 billion as of right now. Um, and so, as of fiscal year 2001, we had $40.5 billion in debt. As of this year, we're looking at $69.4 billion in debt. As of fiscal year 19, five years out from today, which we were planning for, we will be at $79.3 billion in debt, which is $2.1 billion short of the limit, which frankly scares me because everyone in this room even if you've paid off all your credit card bills, you're $9,000 in debt. That is your per capita share of the city's debt. And that's frankly a lot of money for all of us to owe. And as we're ending the end of an expansion in our economy, this is the longest expansion we've seen in quite a while, uh, are we planning to pay our debt? Are we planning to do defeasement of actually paying the debt now versus just prepayment? And uh, whatever we can do to make sure that should we no longer have an expansion that we have enough money to borrow when we need it. Uh, I believe the whole idea behind this borrowing is in bad times we borrow and in good times we pay it off. Uh, thank you. So I apologize. That was a long list of questions. So can, can we go back? I, I, that I'm happy to answer, but let's, would you mind just ticking off and I'm happy to answer? Uh, all are committing to working with DCAS on the provisional issue. So, yes, we are certainly committed to work with DCAS on those issues. And let, let me say this. Um, in the 14 months that I've been here, uh, issue one was the fact that no, work, no employee of the city had a labor agreement. Um, we have worked our way through uh, 15 major labor agreements uh, covering uh, 260,000 workers. Um, we have had discussions with the unions about issues of recruitment and retention, um, and those are clearly important issues, um, very central to the, to the concerns of this administration. So I, I think that it's, it's fair to say we intend to work with DCAS closely, um, and we'll work um, over time on those issues. Uh, but the central theme that we brought here um, was to focus on getting labor agreements done. Um, the next questions were the $4 billion in potential contract overruns, cost-benefit analysis, and then the debt. I apologize. I'm sorry. Would you repeat that? 
Hmm? The, next, the next question, I apologize. Four billion dollars in potential contract overruns, collaborative purchasing, cost benefit analysis, and debt. Do you know the four billion? No. So on the, you know what? I think the way to deal with that is to let me know what contract specifically, and I'll work with the mayor's office of of contract management, and we'll come back with a specific answer on each contract. And off top, I apologize, but I, I can't just actually do that. I don't want to make a mistake. I, so, I gave you the list of contracts last year. Okay. Give it to me again, and we'll get right back to you. Thank you, Councilmember Kalos, I, and we'll be sure to follow up with you on the questions that you have. Cost benefit analysis and the crushing debt. So we'll put that on the second round? Fine. Okay. Um, is that okay with you, Councilmember Kalos? I would love to get the answers, but I, I'm happy to just work. For, I, I, just I'm, for, are you what? ready? Of course. Okay. 30 seconds. On debt. <laughs> so, as, as you know, we're very careful on, on debt and how much debt and how we measure it. So, actually, if you go back in time and you compare it on the total city revenues, we are below. We maintain what the city has maintained through current years and actually below many periods in the past. So we, we are below 15% of total city revenues, and we're very careful about that. There are huge capital needs in the city. You're hearing them actually from your colleagues. All those needs need to be balanced in a way that maintains the fiscal responsibility that the mayor has talked about, and we, are, we do that throughout this process. The 10-year capital strategy is a way to start to approach that and be very careful about it and say, here are the priorities and how we're doing it. But we are managing that debt service. And it was not always managed in the past. Um, those are also cautious estimates as well. So I should caution you on that. They, they are careful about if we will need temporary borrowing, if interest rates go up, and they all reflect that. So, they, so that is another advantage that we have as we put together our financial plan. So we are very cognizant of debt, and we are very careful about how we approach that, and that's why we maintain the city's rating. So we're going to try to get this all done in three minutes. So we like to talk about debt. It's fun, I guess. Uh, going forward, we have three large liabilities. We have our uh, capital debt, $69.4 billion. We have post-employment health benefits uh, debt that is uh, 92, sorry, it's not debt, it's health and post-employment health benefits that are unfunded to the tune of 92 billion. And then we also have pension liabilities. So I guess one question is, how large are our pension liabilities? And then the two follow-ups are, do we have a long-term affordability issue? And what actions are we taking or should we take to deal with these three large pots of uh, obligations out there. So you're correct. These are three risks to highlight. It's part of why we need to be cautious about how we put together this budget, why we were cautious last year. Debt, I think I've, I've answered. We monitor our debt and we're very careful about needs and prioritizing and maintaining it in affordable relationship to our total city revenues. On the pension obligation, we spend, somebody will correct me if I'm wrong, about $8 billion a year. Um, the growth rate has, has slowed down significantly what it was in uh, 2010, 2011, 2012. It's come down, the growth rate has come down. We are in an amortization schedule that was agreed to. So when the pension, when the um, interest rate assumption on the pension was reduced from 8% to 7%, and I would point out that 7% is one of the lowest assumption rates in the country. So we are using a very cautious assumption rate on our pensions. And we have an amortization schedule at the time, I believe it was 2012 for 22 years. Um, so we are amortizing that to get to 100% fully funded pension system. Um, there are different valuations. This is under a very cautious evaluation. There are other evaluations that would tell us that we're at a much higher funded percentage 
than we're actually using in that amortization schedule. Can you send on over the, a copy of that amortization schedule? Of course, we'd be happy to. And then with regard to the post-employment health. On the post-employment, let's remember that our debt service and our pensions are constitutional obligations of the city. The retiree health benefit is an accounting estimate. It is looking at what we currently have and what those costs are for retirees into the future. So it's not the same obligation. It's an obligation we need to recognize. We need to be careful about the risks. But, but I'm sitting here, and we haven't had really much of a dialogue on the health care savings, but it's good I'm sitting here with Bob Lynn, and because there's $3.4 billion of health savings between now and 2018, and that is an attempt to change what's been very historic high levels of growth and pension, which are building that liability to actually bend that cost curve to get that under control, while at the same time providing even better health care to our employees. So all three are very important. All three need to be monitored. They need to be treated differently, though. Thank you.